Today on the agenda, we are going to walk down memory lane. What? Yeah, we're going to look into the history of your item. We're going to begin to understand what the item history is about and how you can use it to your advantage when you're trying to figure out things that don't make sense. So, I am going to go in QuickBooks point of sale to the item list. And before we go any further, I'm going to tell you to click on the link down below to check out the QuickBooks point of sale knowledge group on Facebook. Join up there so you can ask questions about errors or workflow or training or what have you. Maybe you could request a video for my channel here and uh, people such as myself and other community members will answer your questions. It'll be great. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe down below to get the latest, greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos coming out all the time on this channel. But let's do it now. Let's look at the item history. So we're on the item list and I have selected beeswax candle and right over here on the details pane, if you don't have this, you can hit details up here. You can see the history area. Now, most of the time, when I would use the history area, it's because something doesn't make sense. When everything's running correctly and everything's going great, then you normally don't really have to look into the history of your items. But when something doesn't make sense, such as you're making a sale and it pops up and it says there's no quantity, are you sure you want to add this to the receipt? Or um, somebody returns something and the number doesn't seem to make sense on quantity after that, whatever's happening, with the quantity of your item, you may want to track through your history and figure out why it got to the quantity it's at, if something was missed, if something was skipped, if it wasn't received, if it wasn't sold properly, here is how you can do that. On the history pane here, we're gonna head all the way down to the bottom and right here, 722, this is the beginning of time for this particular item. We can see that on 722, Two of them were received, and the on-hand quantity became two. It went from zero to two because two were received. And then uh, four days later, we can see that four more were received, and then we had six on hand. So you can see that these two columns directly correlate. Uh, this column is going to what be what the change is. It's either going to go up or down, and then this is going to be the current on hand at that point. It's kind of like your bank account, you know? Now, I'm going to point out that you can actually scroll over here to the right. It'd be nice if this history pane was big and wide and we could see the whole thing, but we're stuck with what we're stuck with. So we have the document number, and in this case, the receiving voucher, there's gonna be the receiving voucher number. And there's a details pane over here, and depending on what kind of document it is, uh, in the case of a receiving voucher, it is actually going to be the vendor. Yours is probably going to have the same vendor over and over and over again, but this is my sandbox, um, playtime, <laughs> QuickBooks point of sale. So for some reason, I kept receiving this on different vendors. Uh, you could have an alternate vendor, maybe. But anyway, heading up here, uh, you are going to notice that the negative on hand changes are going to be the sales. So in this case a sale would be a sales receipt so we got receipt number 49 is somebody bought one of them and i'm going to scroll all the way to the top uh, i just did a sale of four and you will notice apparently i wasn't attaching names on some of the other receipts but i did attach a name on this receipt and we got sylvia smith you can use this historical uh pane here to show you all the things that are happening. If you're in multi-store, you can actually look at individual stores and what was happening at them, or all of them is the default. And I'm gonna point out that you can double click on any one of these entries and it will jump you right over to that document so you can see exactly what happened there. <clears throat> so if there's something on the history that doesn't make sense, uh, like for some reason this sale, oh, why is that there? I wasn't even open that day, what the heck? I'm gonna double click on it. It's actually gonna show me this particular sales receipt, the cash, the items, the change, whatever. And then I got who did it, who was the cashier. We had Bob working that day that it was closed. So what in the heck, Bob? I'm gonna go talk to him. And I can hit back or I can reprint it. So I'm gonna hit back and we can go, go on our merry way in sleuthing what is wrong with this item and where did the quantities go wrong? Why is it so far off? And 
you will find most of the time that there's some document in the history that has skewed the quantities. It might not have happened today. It might have happened a while ago. It might have happened five documents ago. And what you can do is if you find an incorrect receiving voucher or something like that, you can actually reverse that receiving voucher and redo it and make it right. And let's say this receiving of 30 should have been a receiving of 25. Well, the document number is 14, so I can go to the receiving history, type in 14, find it, reverse it, redo it, and everything will be all set. So that is the quick lesson on the history area in your inventory and non-inventory items and how you can uh, take a look at the history and figure things out because they don't make sense. So my name's Peter with Black Rock Business. Thanks for coming on this little journey in the history and memories of our items. <laughs> Leave a comment or a question below and I'll answer it. You have yourself a great day. Bye-bye now.